Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. I'm Joy J. Moore. This is the podcast for December 18th, 2022, and we start uh, into the Gospel of Matthew. But note one thing, that uh, we're starting with the announcement of Jesus' birth to Joseph uh, at 1 verse 18. We're actually then on January 1st, uh, depending on how many people are going to be in church that day for you. Uh, then we're, we go back and do the pro, uh, the um, sort of the, the genealogy uh which I think is really an important passage, but we do that later. Um, some folks, of course, uh, exercise their evangelical freedom and they switch it up and make their own changes. And of course, we always encourage that. So uh, in Matthew's gospel, the focus is uh, more on Joseph. And in Luke, of course, it's more on Mary. So um, how does that um, how does that ring for uh, how does that ring for you you two? in terms of just the way it makes Advent feel a little different? Well, I, I think you're right. The, so the passage we're talking about today, uh, which is uh, chapter one, starting at verse 18. Um, yeah, it does, it does focus on Joseph, right? The, uh, when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And then, uh, talks about Joseph, right, as a righteous man, uh, not wanting to disgrace her, um, was going to dismiss her quietly, but then an angel of the Lord appears uh, and speaks directly to Joseph, uh, tells him uh, how, you know, the the, the child, with, uh, the son uh, that Mary will have uh, is from the Holy Spirit, uh, and you will name him Jesus. And then one of those fulfillment passages that you had talked about, Joy, in the introduction to Matthew that we uh, that we just did, uh, that, you know, uh, this is to fulfill what has been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, they shall name him Emmanuel. Uh, and Joseph does what um, what the angel says, right? He, he takes Mary as, as his wife. Uh, he does not divorce her. He believes the word um, given to him, and I think it's uh, yeah, it's it's a appropriate. I of course think about Mary more often than Joseph. I think Joseph probably, you know, especially after Advent, uh, is never really talked about or thought about all that much. So I think it's appropriate in this season of Matthew that we spend some time on this figure of Joseph, who is a faithful man, who is, um, you know, a uh, husband to Mary, who uh, uh, is father to, earthly father, at least, to Jesus. Uh, so, yeah, it's appropriate that Joseph gets his due a little bit, uh, at least, uh, in this Advent season. I really appreciate um, the, uh, if you do a bit of comparison, just to look for something different as we're reading through Matthew. Um, Luke, uh, which we'll talk about uh, next week or when we get to Christmas, actually, we turn back to the more familiar reading uh, of the a narrative to, to Luke. And Luke focuses back to the extended family, you know, so we're going to get uh, Elizabeth and Zachariah uh, and then Mary. Um, and what Matthew is actually doing is the extension. Uh, if you think about the verses that are before, which we'll read next week. Um, uh, but if you think about the verses that are before, it's actually moving from the individual, which is very familiar for us, but to the whole world, starting with the whole family. So that genealogy that sets up Jesus in the uh, tribe of uh, the, the the lineage of David, um, uh, uh, descendant of Abraham, uh, is also um, a larger idea than just this nice little romantic story that we have of uh, of uh, of Mary and Joseph that we like to tell, and uh, I think recognizing that difference and then saying, so what are we getting uh, by paying attention, as you said, Catherine, to an honorable man? Um, I appreciate the commentary that recognizes that this is an arranged marriage. And so they are um, already uh, 
um, married. And yet Joseph is honorable. So he's not angry at, you know, Mary for, um, you know, it, it's not a lustful kind of thing. Um, it's really the only way, well, the commentary says this really, really well, but the only way for him to be the provider he is supposed to be is to enter into what should be an honorable uh, relationship. And here, Matthew tells us that the uh, angel confirms that for Joseph. And as you said, Catherine, Joseph receives that and lives into, and that's almost a, 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 a preamble for us that we have this message that reveals to us the intention of God. And will we, like Joseph, live into that promise and see what's going to happen next? I really like uh, two things about this passage, actually three. First of all, just to notice how Joseph is addressed. Uh, Joseph, son of David, says the angel. I mean, don't, uh, don't miss the messianic point there. And uh, the, I, I suspect a lot of uh, folks in the pews will miss it. And so uh, to remind people that David, the promise of the Davidic covenant, and then the promise that uh, a descendant of David, the Messiah, would come. This is clearly being rung here. And that second of all, that a theme of Matthew starts and ends with the promise of God with us. So here we have uh, the promise of Emmanuel in 23. They shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And of course, at the end, I'm with you always to the end of the age. See so the book end, the theme that God is with us in Jesus. Uh, so that the, the, the prophecy that's mentioned in verse 23 from the time of Isaiah was fulfilled or was filled in Isaiah's time. A baby whose actual name was Emmanuel uh, was born. Uh, and then notice this, uh, this, when I taught college, this always th uh, threw the college students for a loop. Um, you are to name him Jesus, which will fulfill the prophecy that a child will be named Emmanuel. We're so used to the symbolics of it. I mean, I was supposed to be, my parents were going to name me Eric. Uh, and right up till I was born when my sister lobbied and got uh, my name changed to Rolf. Um, at various points in my life, I haven't uh, loved that about my sister, Anne. But um, it's it's like you've said, oh, and they named him Rolf to fulfill the promise that his name would be Eric. That's sort of the misalignment here. Um, but it's the symbolism that Jesus, the Savior, because Jesus means Yahweh saves and he will save them for their sins, it is also Emmanuel. So that's a wonderful thing. And then finally, just to note uh, the Trinitarian of the, uh, part of this, that here you have in this passage, you have God, you have the Spirit, and of course you have the Son, Jesus. Yeah, that's all really helpful. I, I, would, I would say, uh, particularly that emphasis on God with us, the, uh, you know, God's presence uh, is, I think, a particularly important thing to note here. I wonder if, if you... If you were to talk about Joseph in your sermon for this Sunday, though, uh, I would suggest that you also include the um, the uh, escape to Egypt. I was looking at our uh, lectionary readings, and I'm not seeing that. Uh, I'm not seeing that in our lectionary readings because, of course, we go back to. Uh, uh, to we we jump to Matthew three uh, and Jesus baptism. So if you do talk about Joseph and uh, it, you know you don't have to, but if you do, uh, I would include some mention uh, of chapter two as well, where again in a dream the Lord appears to Joseph and says, "Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you." Uh, there seems to be a deliberate connection here between Joseph of Matthew, Joseph, you know, of the New Testament, with Joseph of the Old Testament, uh, who we, whom we talked about uh, already this year. Uh, we looked at the story of Joseph in prison uh, in Genesis, uh, what, 39. Uh, and so uh, here, too, Joseph, there's a, another Joseph, uh, is uh, 
God communicates to Joseph through dreams uh, and Joseph is obedient. So uh, again, if, if you, uh, if you concentrate on Joseph or if you uh, spend some time on Joseph in your sermon, you might talk about that as well, that connection with the old Testament where uh, Joseph is open to God's leading and is obedient to God's will and, uh, and therefore acts as protector and, um, you know, supporter of, uh, of Mary and Jesus. I really appreciate that, Catherine, um, because in doing that, in, in threading the echoes from the Old Testament uh, of recognizing that it's, it's a Joseph that's dreaming, um, it really helps us to recognize that God is fulfilling God's promise and that um, you can recognize God in the present if you are familiar with how God has shown up in the past. And that's why we rehearse these stories over and over again, so that we can recognize the faithfulness of God who is still bringing the kingdom of heaven at hand. How's that for a future point? 